What's good, Josh? We're Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out huge WWE return in 2024. Goldberg is furious, we don't know why. Uh, Seth Rollins, uh, tribute to WWE Legends and other wrestling news by WrestleMania. Now, I did get a chance to check out um, CM Punk's uh, match. His uh, house show match with Dominic Mysterio. It was actually on WrestleMania's channel. He had uh, footage from the event. And then uh, he also had footage from uh, his um, his uh, promo, CM Punk's promo, after the match he had with Dominic Mysterio. And pretty much CM Punk um, said we what he's been saying since he came back to WWE, that he's uh, going to be in the Royal Rumble, and he's going to uh, um, not only... You know, he's not here to finish his story, but he's here to, you know, start his story off. He wants the main event WrestleMania. He's going to be the one to, you know, ultimately finish his story and start his new story, you know, as a, a potential champion. So more or less what we've already heard from CM Punk already, but it was pretty cool for the fans there to, you know, get that, you know, that that little bit of uh more of the tease what we're looking forward to going into 2024 so shout out to wrestlemania for posting the match and the uh the promo he had after the match but this should be very very interesting let's see what's going on in the wrestling world appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel let's get right into this one man what's going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including a top wwe star returning in 2024 cm punk's massive madison square garden homecoming seth rollins honors bray wyatt and Brody lee is wwe bringing the rock back randy orton scrapped a new entrance theme Goldberg calls Vince a piece of shit and Whoa. much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and huh. follow us on Facebook for exclusive See why he's also upset. Check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. The first story looks at a top WWE star returning in 2024. Atop of today's news is speculation that Triple H is working on a major return for the coming year. Booker recently discussed the star he thinks belongs back in WWE, mm -hmm. Sasha Banks. I feel some people just feel right in WWE, some mm -hmm. just feel right. And when they go somewhere else, it's cool, but it's like it just doesn't feel the same. And for me, Sasha Banks, Mercedes money, she is money. Mm. She deserves a bag. And as far as I'm concerned, as being one of the preeminent female wrestlers in the last decade, and it feels like she's WWE bound. I'm saying it right now. A recent report that talks between Mercedes and AEW had fallen by the wayside led to discussion about whether she may be considering a WWE I can definitely return. see her coming back to With WWE. With the Royal Rumble fast approaching, fans will be watching the event closely for a Sasha Banks return. I can definitely see it. If there's anything that Triple H is going to do, he's going to try to make that happen. So Next up, CM Punk's massive Madison Square Garden homecoming. The 26th December was a massive night for CM Punk and the WWE Universe as the straighted superstar worked his first match in WWE since 2014, That's competing wild. against the Judgment Day's Dominic Mysterio in New York City's iconic venue, Madison Square Garden. Punk and the Stone Cold Tights defeated Mysterio despite the presence of Mysterio's mommy at ringside. While the match went well and was praised by fans who saw it, Punk did run into a little bit of a snag. Wrestling purist Ibu tweeted that Punk was unable to wear the special ring attire that he ordered for his return. They're going to be plain. The gear he ordered doesn't fit and has to wear generic replacement gear, hence the black mm. tights. Now, we put up the full match up on our YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out if you want. Now, CM Punk is also scheduled to wrestle Daddy Dumb again, this time in Los Angeles on 30th December at the Kia Forum. Oh. If you managed to watch the match, what do you guys think of CM Punk's first match in WWE in just about over 10 years? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, it was cool. It, it wasn't nothing groundbreaking or anything like that but he looked good out there in the ring you know and dominic he's just such a hateable heel that it didn't matter who's in the ring with him he's gonna get some major heel heat uh as just you know people hate love to hate dom but cm punk being out there you know just just that atmosphere him wrestling in a wwe ring at madison uh, madison uh, square garden was just a cool vibe you know so I, I enjoyed it for, you know, what I saw. It wasn't nothing too crazy, but it's just think like the surrealness of it that he is really back in WWE and this is one of his first matches. So it was cool. Definitely worth checking it out for you guys if you were interested to see 
his uh, in-ring return in WWE. Next up, Goldberg blasts Vince McMahon for not delivering a retirement match deal. Now, Goldberg is currently a free agent in the world of wrestling, and there have been some rumors that he's going over to AEW, but Goldberg recently shared his disappointment towards Vince McMahon for not giving Goldberg the opportunity he wanted to end his career on his own terms, leading to a retirement match in WWE. This came after his loss to Roman Reigns at the Elimination Chamber in 2022, and his contract with the company came to an end. But in an interview with Steven and Captain Evil, whilst he praised Vince for giving him the opportunity to wrestle in front of his wife and son, he also blasted him for failing to hold up his end of the deal with a retirement match. Vince is like Dana White, he's the big boss who makes everything happen, and in all honesty, he gave me the opportunity to put my wife and son on the front row and gave me the ability to perform again in front of them. So I owe him everything, until we went to Saudi Arabia and he asked me to put Roman Reigns over, and I had COVID. I remember calling him from my house and said, listen, here's the deal. I'll do it if you give me a retirement match. I did what he asked. As a performer, I was 56 years old. As a human being, you're conscientious about how you look in a bathing suit, especially two months prior into being in that bathing suit. You couldn't work out because you had COVID. Mm. I put myself in a horribly shitty situation to get what I wanted to, but to satiate him and give him what he wanted. Problem is, he never held up his bargain. Vince is a piece of shit as far as I'm concerned. Damn. What do you guys think of Goldberg's comments? Should Vince have given him a retirement match in WWE? Do you think Goldberg has cut ties with WWE with this comment? Let us know in the comments down below. Here's the thing. Him doing a job for Roman Reigns, whatever, cool. Don't really care about that match. Whatever, fine. Him dealing with COVID, obviously that sucks. So for him to be like, you know what? All right. I got you, Vince. I'll do this for you. Just give me a, a good retirement match. All right, cool. Now, I got to be objective here. It is kind of messed up for someone to say, and at the time, Vince was still in control. Um, All right, I need you to do this for me, and in return, I'll give you a match that you want. All right, cool. He didn't get that opportunity. Once his contract ran up, they pretty much said, all right, we don't need your services no more. I can understand the frustrations. Now, granted, we don't know the context of the match. We don't know if uh, Goldberg wanted to be put over against someone, like go out being put over. Like, we don't know who he was going to have that match with. There's a lot of things that we don't know. And maybe they were discussed and things fell through. But I do feel like it, 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 it should have been, and he should have had an opportunity to have that match. Now, once again, we don't know who he was going to have it with and what the stipulation was or whatever the case may have been, how the feud was going to be played up. But I do feel like he deserved that only because, I mean, he did the job for Vince when the dude had COVID. So I, I, I can understand why he feels that way. So for those who thought I was going to hate him and, and be happy he didn't have a retirement match, no, I'm not that type of individual. I'm all about being a man of your word. If you say you're going to do something for someone, you need to uphold it, especially if that someone is bringing you millions of dollars and has done whatever you asked them to do. So. Next up, Seth Rollins on his Bray Wyatt and Brody Lee. Now, Punk wasn't the only WWE superstar who capitalized on the chance to interact with the universe after his match in Madison Square Garden. The visionary told the fans in the Big Apple after he defeated Drew McIntyre, Today's the 26th of December. A few years back, my good friend, our good friend Brody Lee, passed away. Oh, I miss him, man. and just a few months ago, we lost Windham Rotunda last well. But anyway, tonight when the lights were down, I saw a few fireflies out there in the garden. Rollins then told the fans, yeah, 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 man. So look, here's the deal. I'm not leaving the building till you guys light up this place with those fireflies and you sing my damn song so loud Brody and Wyndham can hear you, baby. Let's go New York. The wrestling world will never forget yeah. Brody Lee and Bray Wyatt, two Rest beloved figures peace, who were ahead man. of their time and were taken from us far too early. Ah, Next up, this just, I saw the, the post People were uh, posting for Brody Lee, and it's just still surreal that Bray Wyatt's gone, bro. Ah, man. Rest in peace to both those individuals. Prayers go out to their families and their loved ones. And prayers go out to all of us because we still miss them. We still cherish what they gave to the wrestling business. And, it, you know, this is why we always say, you know, cherish the time that you have on this earth. Because you never know when it's gone. You never know when your time is up. So cherish it and, uh, you know, appreciate every day that you got. You feel me? So.
prayers go out to uh you know their family and, and loved ones once again because that's always a tough one madison square garden show smashes records Apparently, the 26th December Madison Square Garden show was a huge success for the company, at least according to Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp, who reports, Internal WWE Live Event reports claim that WWE's live event in Madison Square Garden was sold out. The event Damn. was said to be the highest grossing domestic non-televised event of all time Damn. for WWE. Sheesh. This is a massive achievement, especially in light of WWE's incredible success at the box office over last year. Damn. Next up, WWE bringing The Rock back. Or could the WWE I've University been hearing rumors Rock about this. Oh boy. Elimination Chamber PLE in Perth, Australia. I've been hearing While there's rumors. no confirmation of the great one appearing at the live event, Figure 4 Online recently reported that Western Australia's Tourism Board put in a request for The Rock to show up. The Tourism Board paid the WWE for the rights to hold the Elimination Chamber, may have felt an appearance by the People's Champion would make it even more prestigious. Given the usual rumors about The Rock working WrestleMania, a Rock appearance at the February PLE would be a great place to get things started for any Mania appearance. Next up, WWE splitting the man. Would I, would I ha like mark out a little bit? Not gonna lie to you, I definitely would. But at the same time, uh, I just if that happens, it it's it it would definitely be clear that Cody's not gonna finish his fucking story. He he's definitely not gonna finish his story. And I don't know if people are gonna wanna wait to SummerSlam for him to finish it. Which leads me to believe if The Rock does come back and wants a feud with Roman, once again, biggest match, but we know who's winning. We know who's winning that match, bro. Unless they pull the biggest swerve of all time. We know who win in that match. And then at that point, it's like, oh, well, he's going to break Hulk Hogan's record. And then he'll drop it. And I think Hulk Hogan's record wouldn't be broken until after SummerSlam. Good God. Ah, it's, it's so much good about that, but it's also so much that could just be problematic. Ah, man, I don't know. We're, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see how this plays out. Undisputed Tag Team Championship. Now it's time for the latest on the long-running rumors that the WWE plans to split the Undisputed Tag Team Please. Championships for Raw and SmackDown have their own set of tag Please. titles. Ringside News had the latest on the situation, saying there were rumors going around within the wrestling community that WWE has plans in the pipeline to split the WWE Tag Team titles. When asking about this, Ringside News was told, we've been discussing splitting the titles ever since we united them. We can confirm there are no plans right now to do it, and there are also plans to not do it. While a second set of tag titles can make things more interesting for the WWE's tag team division, the company has been doing much with one set of titles, and a second set doesn't seem to offer much promise as long as the tag division is an afterthought. Yeah. Next up, Randy. Yeah, it's one of those things. I, I think they needed to split them up, bro, and really put some more effort into it. But, I mean, this, this is the problem. This is the problem when you do this. you got to have some type of out to separate the titles if you don't have... Especially if you don't have, I guess you can say, well, they have competition. I don't even want to say that. They do. They do have competition. It's just, I think it, there needs to be split tag teams. If you, you know, if you can do that for both rosters and kind of, you know, go back to that route like they had before. But once again, none of that's going to matter if they don't really put more emphasis on tag teams on both shows. Because there's no incentive for them to rush to do it now if they're not going to boost up the tag division on both shows. You might as well just keep it with one person having all uh, the undisputed tag titles and just keep it like that until you boost up both divisions. So. Newton scrapped new entrance theme. It looks like WWE came to its senses in terms of changing Randy Orton's theme music. Orton, whose voice's entrance music is as much as part of his character as it is his propensity to hit an RKO out of nowhere, yeah. reportedly nearly had a new theme song. A recent report from Fightful notes, Fightful has learned that ahead of the December 8th WWE Smackdown that a change was considered around Orton's theme from the familiar voices song we've known for so long, or at least the version we knew. Fightful's Corey Brennan had learned that with the Randy Orton theme song, they did one playthrough live in the arena and decided to scrap it. There's no word whether Randy dished out any RKOs to straighten WWE officials out. <laughs> Next up, Will Williams. I'm glad they did, man. They they don't they don't they don't need to do that. Stop it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
You know what I'm saying? If it's if it's still working good, leave it the way it is. Come on. Uh, voices work perfectly for him. William Regal returned to WWE TV. Could the WWE Universe see William Regal back on WWE TV now that his non-compete clause is about to expire? Dave Meltzer discussed this in the 25th December edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, saying that Regal's non-compete as far as appearing on television is just about over. At the time Regal left, he said that he was going to be appearing on television. He hasn't worked for NXT and they have Michaels as an authority figure, who, while not as good at the job as Regal, is a far bigger name. They just hired Aldis for the role on SmackDown and uh -huh. wouldn't have done so if they planned to put Regal in that spot. I could see a cameo, but as far as a regular TV role, it would have been in as an authority figure or manager. It's unknown whether Regal wants to be on TV, but if he does, WWE should have no problem finding him a role in NXT or the main roster. Mm -hmm. Would you guys like to see Regal return on TV? Let us know in the comments. Of course, I would love to, you know, obviously see him on NXT, but they obviously going with HBK, uh, HBK as, you know, the on-screen authority. So, I don't know. I'm not sure, you know. Wherever he goes, I, I can see him more being involved on the behind the scenes rather than on camera. But he may make some cameos and appearances here and there. It's down below. Next up, excellent news for Sami Zayn fans. The Sami Zayn fans won't have to wait long to see him back in action following his recent storyline absence from WWE TV. Sami was written off TV after Drew McIntyre kayfabe injured him on Raw, but Sami's letting his fans know he'll be coming to WWE Arena near them very soon. Sami tweeted that I'll be performing on WWE's holiday tour, five great cities in five nights to end 2023, the wildest year of my career. Tonight, MSG, tomorrow, Boston, 28th December, mm. Montreal, 29th December, Toronto, 30th December, LA. Crazy times, lots of love. Thank you for letting me play. Sammy also let his fans know, haven't been very active on here lately. It's been a crazy and some ways difficult time for me, but I'm so grateful to be in such great cities with such great fans to end such a remarkable year. This life has been good to me. Just know I'm very happy to be here with you. There's no word on when Zayn will return to TV, mm. but he's likely be looking for revenge on Drew McIntyre oh, sure. when he returns. And I, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I honestly want to see a feud between them going into WrestleMania. They can continue this feud through the Royal Rumble all the way to WrestleMania. This can be one of those feuds that doesn't need a championship to be good. And you the blow off for you is at WrestleMania. If they want to, if that's the route they choose to go, I'm all for it. I am all for it. Because I know that that intensity Sammy's going to give is going to be so good, man. Finally, Chris Jericho's message to CM Punk after his first match. And last but not least, Chris Jericho took to social media following the WWE posting a video of CM Punk's triumph and return to MSG. But what did Jericho have to say? Well, he just said, congrats, with some fire emojis. The comment caught some by surprise after oh. Jericho had a brief social media melee with Punk's attorney Stephen P. New on X, and the two exchanged barbs on the 2022 alleged all-out altercation between Punk and A. Steel against the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. While an NDA was signed, Chris Jericho noted he was there and could discuss the incident as he hasn't signed an NDA. But this led to Punk's attorney commenting, it's in your employee handbook unless you have a special one. We can figure it out. Yeah, I see But he this. responded saying, I've also never signed an NDA in my life, ever. So stop trying to be a bully and make egotistical fantasy brags for your clients and start doing some research before you make blanket statements about your buddies. Because I saw everything that night, including how Lucy and her husband, best buddy, acted and what really went down. And since I was in the room and watching her and everybody else the whole time. But Jericho added, I know exactly what really happened and considering you weren't there and I was, maybe you should shut your mark ass up. Because Damn. what really went down was disgusting. And he wasn't done though and commented, thank you Chris, we'll just attach this tweet as Exhibit A. Merry Christmas. What do you guys think what about Jericho's hell, congratulatory bro? message for Punk? What is, what is going on, man? Hold on. Let me see. Because you know how some, some people like post stuff and it could be a maybe a deeper well, meaning, he just so. said congrats with some all right well i mean that seems like a friendly enough uh like response damn man what's going on jeez what is going on <laughs> that boy jericho said i ain't man i ain't here for the nonsense i was there you wasn't so shut your mark ass up that's is wild man but comment down below let me know what you guys thought about uh the different news stories in this particular episode once again shout out to wrestlemania for dropping the actual full match of cm punk and dominic mysterio at msg 
and uh also the promo he gave after the match so if you haven't seen it go check it out he's on his page right now but i appreciate all the love and support you guys channel on channel road to 150k and i'm still getting speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one peace <laughs> y'all god damn i was holding in that sneeze for so damn long y'all i tried to finish the video before the sneeze came out and i failed i tried y'all i'm sorry